when you fucking with these niggas, don't fuck with these niggas for free. Don't fuck with no niggas that ain't providing. Don't be going through shit with no nigga that a nigga ain't going to go through with you. That's how you got to look at it. And play these niggas how the fuck they going to play you. Because what the fuck? That shit. After you learn that shit, you be like, oh, nigga can't, st- nigga can't come in my life right now. Nigga ain't paying no motherfucking bills. Oh. I live in a high rise. <laughs> All that, oh, love you for who you are. You ain't got shit. We can't do nothing for me. Where? Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's popping? It's your boy, Mr. J Hill, the J Hill Podcast. Shout out to everybody that's been fucking with me for a long time, bro. We didn't went when we didn't went through so many names, trials, tribulations, all that. We were trying to figure out the name. I'm like, fuck it. J Hill Podcast. Um, so shout out to the gang. Uh, special guests in the building. Had to go. Nah, I can't say that because I'm from Baltimore. I had to go back to my region with this one. You feel me? I was going to say back home, but nah, you know, like, niggas know. You know how they be. You, you know how they <laughs> is. I had you to go back to the be. region, straight out of D.C., DMV. I can say that for y'all. Yeah. DMV. Shelly the MC is in this motherfucker. What's up? Hello. What's popping? What's up? Yo, I feel like um, we did the freestyle. I ain't really talked to you. I think that was a favor of a favor. You pulled up, did the freestyle, you killed it, but I ain't never really talked to you. Yeah. Oh, where do we start? Where do we start? Yo, I feel like I was looking online. There's so much shit. Like, first of all, how do you feel? I feel good. I feel great. I feel blessed. I feel good. Sometimes I got to ask that question and just and sit sit on it. You know, because sometimes people be like, I'm good. You know, I'm just working, grinding. Is you know, how yeah. I be. And that's yeah, I it. feel good. I feel good. Why you feel so good? I feel like I'm happy in the space that I'm in right now. Where I'm at in life, I feel good. Um, how far I've came out here in my personal life, mm. um, I'm just, I feel good. How did, I feel really good. How did you get there? Um, it took a lot of time to get here. It wasn't mm. like a, just, I had to go through some a lot of things, you know. Um, being out here taught me how to be alone. Um, how to build this relationship with myself. So I've been here for two years. So I live by myself. So I don't want to keep saying so. Are no, you good? But I live by myself. I feel like living here has helped me build like a strong relationship with myself mm. and have that happiness and where I am in life with myself. Um, I feel like that's like the main thing that I'm so happy about. I fuck with that. Let me um, make a uh, disclaimer real quick. Sometimes I feel like when I had these conversations, I got to do it, like, by myself in a room, like, with pitch black, dark, and just vibing out, you know what I'm saying? We got, yeah. oh, we got a little audience in here today. Yeah. So, like, I feel like we had a talk show. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Because so, I was about to be like, hey, y'all. <laughs> Facts, no. Nah, so <laughs> like I say that because I'm like, I hear you talking, but like, I don't know if you watch my show, if you ever, like, seen any clips, but, like, the clips really do the show a disservice because the clips be funny, entertaining, and things like that, but the show is really, we get deep on this motherfucker. Yeah. It's like, you know. I like deep interviews, though. All right. So, um, for you loving yourself, let's drink. You know what I'm saying? Let's, okay. let's just get it popping. You got to pour your own poison. You got your cup, though. Um, you can just move the mic out there. That's just move not my it. cup. That is. Like, I put it right there for you. You sure? Yeah. It's, it's brand oh, new. It's empty. Okay. Come on. No, you got to pour your own poison. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, you got to get yourself drunk. Like, whatever you do is on you. You feel me? Like, okay. you don't got nothing to do with me. Sheesh. Yeah, see? I wouldn't have did that. <laughs> <laughs> just trying. like maybe two shots, uh, maybe man. one, maybe two. No, nah, I'm gonna pour some because I'm gonna let the um, I'm gonna let the team have some. Everybody except for T. Um, <laughs> who want you want this happen? Huh? Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You can you can get. Yeah, get your get your, your 15 minutes of fame. You feel me? Hey, little fame for me. There you go. <laughs> no, no problem. Um, so you said you you learn how to love yourself. You moved yeah. to Atlanta. And that's how you got to this point of happiness. If I had to yeah. ask you a question, though, like, if I had to ask you what is happiness to you, what would you say? 
being able to be happy with yourself when no one else is around, mm. knowing that you can do whatever it is you have to do and not need someone beside you to do it, not needing people, not needing your circle, knowing that like being okay in the brain with spending, some people can't spend a day by themselves. Mm. Some like, people can't spend a week. Some people can't spend an hour alone. Like they go crazy. It's about knowing how to be alone, knowing yourself and not feeling empty because you're not with someone, because mm. you don't have the company of other people, because someone else is not in your brain all the time. It's about knowing how to just be you, and Facts. that's it. So I asked you how you feeling. You said, I feel good. I feel happy. I feel you know great. what I'm saying? I said, how you get there? Just learning learning to be by myself, learning to love myself. I've done a lot of shadow work. Mm. I feel like social media, people look at stuff from the outside. Nobody really knows what's going on in your real life. You get what I'm saying? They just look at the stuff you post. They look at what you doing, and they look at it like, oh, you know, you don't really know what's going on out here. I don't post no percent of anything that's really going on out here with me. It's just more so it's work. I get up. I make money. I do what I got to do. Keep it pushing. Like, the Internet is not, it's not a mirror of my life at all. You know, it's funny. We was talking about happiness. I was I was talking to my girl about happiness. I was we like, we take our shot. We, drink, I'm just drink. We gotta take it at the same time. We gotta take a cheer first. You I know, mean, cheer, everybody, put, the, everybody put their cup up to the air when we gang, cheer. Gang, 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 gang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I was talking about happiness earlier because, like, for me, what people don't know about me is like, as insensitive as I am, I'm very sensitive. So, like, what's your sign? I'm a Gemini. Okay, I'm Aquarius. Yeah, yeah. Y'all so, like, cool. uh, like far as me, like, I'm. I'm, it's crazy because everybody think I'm so insensitive, but I'm an empath as well. It's crazy. I'm a real bad empath. Like, it's crazy. It's like, a part of my prayers, like, everybody be in my prayers. I didn't know that until I moved here. Well, I kind of knew, but I really knew once I got here. When you say that you're an empath? Yeah. How did you, like, what, what made you? I don't, I can't be in too many rooms. I'm not so pressed to be outside and be around new people and just be around a whole bunch of people all the time. Like, I feel everything. I feel energy when I walk through the door. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. That's like, a different I can approach. feel your energy from a cause. Like, Damn. and I know when it's fake. I know when it's, I just don't care to be in. It's fake out here. It's so, real fake out here. So I don't want to say it's fake out here. It's not fake out here, but the industry is fake. I mean, it's black Hollywood. I'm not going to say Hollywood Atlanta, but the fake. industry is fake. No, I fa- no. Listen. So I don't. So tell me, is my energy real or fake? Tell me. No, I feel good. I feel like it's genuine. Like we chilling. Like, All right, let's make sure. I don't so, feel no bad energy. In here. It's crazy that you said you use that example as an empath because I'm thinking of an empath. It's the same thing, but it's like you like you taking in people's energy, right? Me, I'm thinking about like I'm kind of taking in people's energy, but I'm looking at it like when somebody else said, I'm sad, but it's the same thing, right? Yeah. So I was saying like me being an empath, it's like you know a part of my prayers. I pray that like everybody is happy. Right, and I remember I was having this conversation with my girl, and she was like, "You know, happiness not is not a destination; it's mm-hmm. an ongoing thing. It's a journey. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can feel happy one moment and not be happy at the next moment. You exactly. feel me? So it's not really a destination. And I feel like happiness to me, to be honest, you know, is is, is a place of I don't even know how to answer that because it's like it's it's a, it's a it's a place that you go in and out of. Yeah, and it's, it's some type of satis- satisfaction. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter what. And that's, what. like, the word, too. Mm. Like, when you say satisfaction, when you ask me how am I feeling, like, when I say I'm happy, it's like a, I'm satisfied with life right now. I'm mm. not comfortable. I have so many other things to do and places to go and, you know, and milestones to reach. But I'm satisfied with how, with how far I came and where I am mentally, physically, spiritually, you know. Yo, you know, it's crazy. And these, I don't know how, I don't know what year you was in, when you was born in, I ain't going to ask you age or nothing like that. But the older we get, you know, the closer death to death we get. And like yeah. when we t- start talking about death, that's a hard conversation. But like it's something that we all gotta face, right? Yeah. Um, I was thinking the other day, <laughs> this is crazy, but I'm like, man, you know, knock on wood. I'm like, if I pass today, you know, I I I I, I lived a good life. You know what I'm saying? I did I did a lot of things that a lot of my peers wouldn't didn't do. I, I experienced a lot of experiences that my family didn't experience. You know, yeah. graduate from college, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, yo, you know what? I can be happy where I'm at. Even though I want more for myself, I yeah. can be happy where I'm at and I can be satisfied. You know you did your best you can. Exactly. You know you kept going. That's I, how I feel. You know you ain't just sitting and just comfortable. I ain't bullshit. Yeah, I, and at I think all. every all my peers, niggas around me, my anybody I work with can look at me and be like, nah, that nigga Jay worked his ass off. I feel like yeah. I can. But I was going to ask you this, and I think this is the deepest question of them all, if you can remember those times. Mm-hmm. How hard was it to get to this place that you're at right now? 
real hard. Mm. Real hard. Talk to me. I remember it was about a year ago. It took me a long time to get here mentally to be happy with myself, happy with my life. You got to think learning to be out here, like being out here alone and also like going through the changes of not being around family, not really having real friends, actually out here like really hustling, trying to survive out this bitch. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's deep. It's more than just social media. Like you really got to come to a place like a mental where like you tell yourself that you're okay. You got to come to a place that when you being alone, it comes with that self love. Cause sometimes when you at a point where you don't know yourself, sometimes I feel like when I got here, I changed. Mm. And I don't want to say changed in a bad way. It was just more so like, I'm not who I used to be. I'm not around I'm not in the environment that I used to be in. I'm in a whole new environment. I'm with myself every day. I'm a full-fledged fucking grown-ass adult out here. I'm dealing with all grown women shit. I'm not that same little girl anymore. And it's kind of like, I thought about also with my career, like, my image didn't change. Mm. I don't even look the same. So you stuck in this place like, how do I find myself when I'm not the old me anymore? Mm. And what I had to realize was, it's not about, you. sometimes you get this feeling like, damn, I need to get back to myself, or you you visioning this old person you used to be. Mm. You're looking at old pictures, I'm listening to old music, I'm looking at old music videos and all this shit, and it's like, damn, I just wanna be in that mental space that I used to be in. I why don't that. I feel like that? You know, like, why don't I feel like that anymore? Why am I not that confident anymore? Mm -hmm. Why do I not have that, that high self-esteem like I used to? Mm -hmm. Why do I not love my life? I, everything just used to be so easy. And what you gotta realize is that you never gonna go back to that person. You only turn, you only evolve and become a better person. Mm -hmm. You become this new person. So even with like my career, like changing my image, everything, like gaining weight, like I'm just not even the same person anymore. So it's just like, oh. damn, well, who is this new person? And sometimes you sit, when you sitting alone and it ain't no friends, it's not no family, it's not nobody to kiki with, you sit and sometimes you sit and you just like, well, so I don't want to say you want to be like, who am I? But you just like, who am I? Yeah. It'd be like, who is this? this and person? what I had to do was I used to sit down and I used to be like, what do I inspire to be? What type of woman do I aspire to be? Mm. What do I see as my future self? And I used to sit down with myself and I used to vision it. How I wanted myself to look. How I wanted to curry myself. What I did with my life. The things that I want in my life. And it's just about letting that old me go and realizing like I'm a new person. Mm. And of course, like, a lot of people on the outside see it. They haven't seen me for years. The only thing, I just feel like everybody just remember who I used to be. And nobody sits with the fact like, okay, this, she's a grown woman now. I'm very a grown woman now. I'm not a child no more. I'm not, it's not even about my age. It's more so like about my environment. You mm. get what I'm saying? It's about what I'm doing in life. Like, I'm not in the hood no more. I don't be on the blocks no more, hanging outside, just doing nothing, no priorities, hanging outside with my friends, ghetto. Like, I used to be ghetto as hell. But now it's like, I'm grown. It's just my environment is changing me a lot. And it's about loving that person, loving mm. this new person. You got to sit with yourself. You got to look in the mirror and just start to love yourself, loving who you are now, appreciating and loving every single part of you. Because if you don't, you always gonna you never gonna be happy. Facts. And it's yourself. You gotta be with this person forever. You can't depend on somebody else to love you or somebody else to keep giving you validation or somebody else to keep boosting your head to, to build that confidence. You gotta give it to yourself. You gotta know it within. You can't keep looking back at old pictures and who I used to be. And it's it's not coming back. Facts. You gotta love who you are now. You, you know, the only person you're gonna die with yourself. Or, you know, it's crazy about that, right? Like, you got to love yourself enough to be able to change and put the excuses to the, to the side, right? Like, because you, you touched on gaining weight. Yeah. Bro, I'm 31 now, bro. I swear to God in my life. I used to play football. I used to run track. I was like that, too. I was good. Now you look at my old pictures. They still on Instagram. Like, damn, I look good. Like, my abs like that. It be like look, that. Boy, I was at the beach the other day, boy. I looked at a video. I'm like, oh, nah, this shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, and it get harder you like when you get older, right? So I'll never forget. I looked at, I was driving a boat for real. Like, not, not pause, you feel me? But like, for real, for real, driving a boat, right? And I looked at, because you know, they recording you from the side. And I'm like, damn, that shit bad. Like, I think my trunks was even a little hanging, like, down a little bit. You know how you get fat? Like, you shit, yeah, you ass me. I was. <laughs> Oh my God. Yo, I looked at that shit like, oh. We reminiscing nah. like shit. Boy, it was so bad. 
at that moment, I'm like, I'm in the gym every day. I've been in the gym for like two and a half weeks now. I'm trying to do 30 days. You feel me? I'm going to get there. I thought he was about to be like six months. Oh, but no, no. No, it starts start start somewhere. You feel me? Though. You start. You start. It starts somewhere. But at that That's moment, I'm up. like, nah, I got to make a change. Yeah. In those moments, right, when you're having those conversations with yourself, tell me how hard it is to be like, to look at where you at, look at the, sex, the, the success you had, but understanding that it's different. Like talk, talk to me through the frustration of like, yo, this is where I want to be, and this is the steps I gotta, I gotta take to get there. Say that one more time. The frustration of like just going through the pain and getting through it. Like how? Like, what I had to learn was this. Is another thing, I had to learn to enjoy the journey. Mm. You gotta, and uh, it's so crazy how I started appreciating this. It started with things like I cut all my hair off, and. Um, I had my locks. I cut. Oh, I'm talking about. What like, made you do that, though? I had locks. and My hair was so damaged. And the only thing was to do to get it right was to grow it back. So I was wearing wigs back to back. Nobody knew I cut my hair. Nobody knew but, like, my personal friend. How was that, though? It was a lot. You go through, like, that ugly stage. Damn. But then you start taking care of it. Time starts passing. You start seeing your growth. I have, like, a whole album in my phone that shows from scratch. And I hated the beginning. Mm. I hated it. I felt like, because I'm so used to having locks, so I'm not used to people, well, not people, but just thinking, how would I look when I take my wig off? Like, it was never that. I go to sleep, I wake up, I take a shower. I look the same all day long when I got locks. That was my natural hair. So not being able to wear wigs and having, like, hair that's this short, you like, damn, like, I got to put on a wig to feel good. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But what happened was, it's like, I, went to, I had to go through that ugly stage. But as time kept passing, what I felt was that, while I was growing, my hair was growing too. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It was like a journey. And I would just kept seeing my hair grow. I kept I found a stylist I was going to and she was taking care of my hair. I'm talking about clipping my ends and she just like, just keep doing this. Make sure you keep doing this. And I'm just listening to everything she's telling me to do to keep it up, to keep it growing. I'm talking about it just kept growing. She's been taking care of my hair for like a year. My hair is like down here now. I yeah, really lit. wear my hair now, so it's like. Picture me saying, "I thought she was about to say." Oh no, hell no, right no! There. It's only been a that's year. So me. that's how you did me. Yeah. So all right. So just a fun <laughs> fact for everybody that don't know: your hair grows a half an inch a month. Mm. It's twelve months in a year. Your hair grows six inches if you maintain it and you take care of it. You get six inches in one year. So my hair is like six inches, maybe seven now, seven almost eight. But my I wish our body grew like that. Sometimes. Yeah, so I felt like what I taught myself was even when my hair was short, I had to learn how to love it. I used to look in the mirror. I used to be happy just to see it get like this when it hit three inches. And it's not about, of course, I want to be all the way 12 inches down my back, but are you, you going to hate yourself until you get there? Mm. Or are you going to love the journey? Are you going to love every single step of the way when it's nappy, when it's curly? And I learned that with myself when I started gaining weight and I started to hate it. I had to tell myself, like, at the end of the day, it's the journey. You got to love yourself. You, mm -hmm. can't, you can't not like it. You can't just walk around in frustration. Can't nobody change how you feel about yourself but you. Mm -hmm. So once I started appreciating it, my weight don't bother me now. I feel good. I feel like I look good. You can't tell me nothing. Like, I don't trip off of but it. But talk to me about those times where it was bothering you, like, when you see your weight or your, your hair, and it's like, that shit hurt the, the times you in the house crying and nobody know. Like, yeah. talk to me about those times if you could. I don't feel like I ever cried about it. It just used to be like, when you never gained a certain amount of weight, if you've never been a certain size before in your life, and you hit that moment, you like, what the fuck is this? Is it ever going to go away? Because I was bigger before. I mean, I'm still thick right now, but I was... I was even, I, get, I would weigh even more mm. at a certain time, maybe sometime around this time last year, I weighed even more. And I was just like, what to do? Like, am I going to get in the gym? Am I going to get surgery? Like, am I going to get a BBL? Like, I'm gaining I mean, weight all in my Atlanta, face. Everybody got BBL Every, and, and shit. Exactly, and you walk around out here, and that's all you see. So you you kind of mentally driven into thinking that you're, everything is supposed to be fake because everything out here looks it's perfect. Everybody fake. teeth done, body done. Everything is fake out here. So... Feeling like, damn, I'm gaining weight. Like, you, you, I got in the moments. I don't get in the moments anymore, like, at all. Like, when it first started happening, I was, and that was like a year ago. Mm. After a while, like, of course I started dropping weight. And eventually I'm just like, all right, this, this is what it is. I look good. That's like, fire. But speaking to the BBLs, I'm not going to lie. If I was a girl in Atlanta, yeah, I wouldn't want no BBL. Because honestly, bro, this shit looks Terrible. Like I never. Let me I, listen to me. I swear to God, and no shade, because y'all probably trying to look at me and pick me apart. Fuck you. I ain't scared of y'all. 
I, I swear to God, bro. Oh, my God. I never thought about, like, how bad BBLs look until I got here. Like, anywhere else, I guess I'll see one. I'm like, oh, that look cool. Yeah, she got a She man. fat, you feel me? Here, you see so many different type of BBLs. I mean, it's like you got big BBLs. You got good BBLs. You got bad BBLs. You got, like. It's ter- more bad than good. It's oh, yeah. more bad, it's bro. More I see it. more bad than good. And that shit be like, bro, why would you? That shit look disgusting, bro. Oh, God, that shit is bad. Terrible. Yeah. I don't know why y'all want that shit. I feel like that shit's bad. We all thought about it. I thought about getting one around last year. I was actually like in my mind, like, all right, I'm about to get one. Um, because I had gained so much weight, eventually I ended up dropping it. And what I started seeing was like girls on Instagram, when you see their body looks good on Instagram, and when you see it in person, like you said, it looks fucked. That'd be up. that Photoshop. They be, and that be shit like, down to a T. It's like when you see it in person, it's like that don't look right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and then also another thing is I feel like, of course, and I'm not saying anything bad about it because eventually I might down the line and just get one. If I'm getting money like that and it's just like, fuck it, let me throw it, then oh well. But sometimes you look at it like everybody looks the same. You get in that part and like you don't have your original your original um, silhouette yeah, anymore. Yeah, and you just shape just like everybody else versus a natural body. You got some people talk shit in my comments, but you got other people like, this shit real. Like, that's mm-hmm. her real body. I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have to, you get what I'm saying? This is how God made me. And I appreciate that because at the end of the day, it's my real body. No, nah, facts. Like, I seen somebody do the, uh, I guess they got their little, what is it called? Your hip, your hip dips. Oh, I thought yeah. that was hard. That looked that ain't look bad. I seen somebody do that shit. I think they was from back home too. Like that shit. It was, was like cool. f- like they they still got the lipo. N- well, I don't think her ass done, but she just got like the oh that little suction f- fat removed and put it like because you know how the girls oh, have yeah, hip, yeah. hip dips. I guess yeah. I, guess I got dips called. too. I yeah, feel but, like I wanted that too to take it and just put it on the side. Yeah, I thought I that was hard because it ain't look terrible. It ain't look like disproportionate, yeah. but that shit was fire. Yo, you know what's crazy? Girls be talking all this shit about niggas, right? But girls can do so much shit that niggas can't that we wish we could do. Like, if I could just go get my knees done and be taller, I would. You feel me? Like, bitches always be like, niggas short, niggas short. Shit, I'm pretty sure. If... Y'all would change anything. Bro, That's what? why I'm not so against you it. Because extension. at the end of the like, day, like. <laughs> you do anything, like, yeah, it's not, like, yeah. And it's not saying I'm not against it at all. Like, at the end of the day, like I said, eventually in the future, I might end up getting one. It's a possibility. And I already know, like, down the line, it's not no main priority right now, but I'm probably end up getting one. But, and I might not. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I'm not against it at all. But when you see those bad BBLs and you see the botched bodies, it make you think again, like, hold up, don't rush into it because people are looking crazy. And you could Photoshop anything. Real life is real life. Real life is real life. Facts. Real life is real life. (laughs) In real life. Yo, I want to, it was question. You know, I was doing my research on you and shit like that. And one thing that stuck out to me the most, and you can correct me if you don't feel like this. It felt relatable to me because when I moved out here, and I still had this conversation to this day, I'd be like, everybody look at me on Instagram, and they'd be like, yo, this nigga lit, this nigga lit. And I'm like, man, I'm still struggling. Fuck that. I'm trying to be rich. Fuck looking lit. Do you ever feel like the numbers don't match up of where, in real life, speaking of real life, like you wish you was at, in real life, what people think you at on Instagram, if that makes sense? Like some people look at you on Instagram and be like, yo, she lit, like she famous, she this and that. And you be like, bro, I'm still Shelly, like I'm still struggling, I'm still working my ass off. Like y'all tripping, I wish I was who you think I am. You ever feel like that? Or nah? I do. I don't, I don't, I don't get like that. I think for me, it's like the opposite. Mm. I, I get a lot of hate. So. I see you, but you. I Listen. I see the hate. Listen. We gonna talk about that, but you get a lot of and love. It's, not, it's crazy. not trying to put the put the like emphasis on the hate or like we gonna talk about that too. To I put it on side. But I, I feel like people look at me always looking at me like, oh, she not doing enough. Oh, she went out there just to do that. Oh, she ain't out there doing For shit. Real? I get this all day long. She ain't out there doing shit. She she ain't doing nothing. Oh, she da 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 da. It's it's negativity all fucking day. Like, and in my mind, I'm like, I'm still out here though. I'm out here living though. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, never yeah. get the, nobody never give me the props. Like, at least she's still out there. Y'all don't understand how bills is still paid. So you feel like how people I'm still surviving? For real. Yeah. It's always hate. And it's like, y'all don't understand how much it takes. I have never even turned around. You get what I'm saying? Facts. I'm still here. It's two years later. I don't, people don't say that. People don't be like, oh yeah, I've never heard nobody say, she's still out there. Cause people come out and they get this pressure on them. 
and they turn back around and they fly right back home and they never come back out this bitch. It's crazy. I'm still out here, no family, no friends, no support, no nothing. I'm out here hustling, no matter what it is. Every bill is paid. I like I got my shit together. You yes. can never. This is real life. When I log out this motherfucking, I can power off that fucking phone and, and I'm power straight. Power on my motherfucking life. And I'm still out here. <laughs> right. And whatever obstacle comes my way, I'm pushing through it alone. And that's what I be wanting people to realize. Like, alone. I'm off this bitch by myself. I don't have no day ones, no, or somebody sitting beside me, nobody pushing me through this shit. I'm out this bitch. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it to survive. Like, and I never get that. People always like, sheen on shit. It's more, it's hate all day long. Why so. you feel like niggas hating so much? Because, I don't know. I really, I can't even is say Is it hate because. or is it just a chip on your shoulder you got? Be honest. It's hate. <laughs> I don't... It's hate. I don't like it's hate. I feel like respectfully, I feel like you're it's, overlooking the love that you get. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't I don't want to like put putting the focus all on, on that, but it's more hate than it's love. But then I do see the love. You do got real supporters and people that's wanting to see you win. But the hate overpowers overpowers it crazy. And it's Damn. like when I got friends from back home and I talk to them on the phone every day and they just can't believe it. And they just like, how the fuck do you mentally just take this shit in? And hate is coming towards you every fucking day. Like they never see nothing good. Like people that fuck with me for real be like, how the fuck you even like mentally, how do you get through the shit? Do you ever look at it and be like, yo, what the fuck did I do for niggas that hate so much? My friends ask this, ask this shit. They be like, what the fuck did you do? Like, they know me in real life, so they know. Like, I Have you ever second guess yourself or question yourself and be like, damn, maybe it was this? Or maybe no, it was that? No, I don't do anything. I'm out of my business. I don't be in no drama. I don't be in shit. I do me. And it's like... So if you can't think of nothing, no I can't word. think of nothing. So niggas just be randomly like, Shelly the MC. Yes, it's like a this trend. Instagram, like, it's a trend. It. Like, if I made, I hate Shelly the MC shirts, they would sell out. <laughs> you should make them then. It's just, they would sell out. <laughs> Fuck Motherfuckers got their billboards like, Fuck her. Like, I be like, but you ain't got no haters, you ain't poppins. But when you did say, do people look at me like I'm bigger than what I am or like I'm doing better than what I really am? No, they, they look at it like she ain't doing shit. Damn, that's crazy. And it's fucked up to say that and to even like make the interview about that, but it's true and that's just what it is. No, I want, so I wanted to talk about that because one thing I did see as well, shit, it's Shelly the MC versus a few niggas everybody from back home. Versus everybody. What like what it like? <laughs> where did it come from? Because we, I mean, you know, I really I'm, don't we gotta know. talk about it. So I promise you, like, who wait, who should we start with first? You want to go or you should I just bring up the names? You want to go? Who? who I'm saying, who should we start with? Because I see that who? throughout the years, it's been like beefs with this person, this person, this person. I've never beefed with anybody. Well, it's been. I've never disses. had beef with anybody. Oh, well, all right. It's been disses. It's, it's from been this a lot of clout chase then. So which which one should we start with first? Who you want to start with? I don't know. All right. Go so these are the names that I've seen. The only biggest thing you really see is Ant bothering me on the internet. <laughs> Is Anybody that, else just don't even make sense. I like, seen some other ones back in the because I went. I seen one time. I seen uh, I don't know the name because you know I'm not from that area. Like something Q, T or some shit. I don't know who. It's something Q, some shit like that. If you look it up, I'm pretty sure it pop up. But um, there was that one. It was the Murder Monroe, I think. I don't know these people. Uh, I know who they are, but it's never been an incident. It's never been anything going so on. Where like, they, so how, people just be dissing like they don't know me from nowhere. Never been an incident. Never spoke to them. Like, this is what I go through. Okay. So Literally. Before we, before we go to the, the ant shit, do you think it's because you the, you was the top dog in the city? Exactly. Hate. That's where we from. That's what they do. Oh, you big? If I was a nigga, I hate to say, I even hate these words that even come out of my mouth. If I was a nigga, if I was a male, somebody would have killed me by now. Mm. That sucks to even say that. Why do you, you like see that? what our rappers, what our male rappers go through and where we from? They get killed. Why because think, of hate. I'm a female, like so nobody's going to come up to me and shoot me. Like, you get what I'm saying? So it's like, we're going to hate on her until we can't no more. We're going to keep bringing her down because that's just how it is where we're from. But well, where, where do you think it came from? Because like, like you said, it's clearly a cycle. In a, uh, I think it's more so of it's like a, everybody wants to win, so let's pull the top person down so I can get up there on top of her. Mm. But when you real, it don't go away. I cannot drop music. My name is still in the blogs every fucking day. Every little thing I do, like, it's not on me, it's in me. Like, I can't, 
I don't ask for attention. I don't, it just comes. Like I do me. And you and because of my real supporters, people just fuck with me. I'm not I don't wanna keep saying people don't fuck with me. Yeah, I get the hate. But you got people that do fuck with me. Niggas right. love me. You got bitches that fuck with me. Like, so they never wanna stop, no matter what it is that I'm doing. I'm more of an influencer than anything. I'm mm. more of a just a public figure than anything. I cannot sit back and do nothing. I can sit back and do nothing, and they're still talking about me sitting back and doing nothing. Like, it's crazy. Do you ever think about trying to with the least to like, effort? Do you do you ever think about trying to like approach the hate with maybe some positive? You know how they say kill you 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 kill hate kill with love. Kill with kindness. I don't say nothing. You just don't say fuck. My it. first time ever talking about it ever. Damn. I don't say nothing. I read all comments. I'm not about to type back to you. I'm not about to get on live and be like raw like da da da. I'm not about to get. I don't have to or explain not even myself. You ever think like, about like yo like I mean no. Like piecing it up or like no what's, no. I don't. I don't respond to nobody. Only person that ever got a reaction out of me off some play shit, me hopping on live drunk, being dumb, was Ant. Like, other than that, I, I really honestly, I look at when you, when you go, when you see so much hate so much, you eventually just be like, what the fuck they saying? Of course I see it. And you just keep it moving. What the fuck I'm going to be speaking, talking, reacting for? You get what I'm saying? They going to hate regardless. So, is it, you think it's because of your, like you said, like how, how big you are, how big you was in, this, in in D.C.? Because, like, you know, if somebody diss you, if somebody, like, under you, like, bro, you a peon. Like, I don't need to say that. But, like, if somebody was on your level, you probably would respond, like, eh, I guess, if that makes sense. I feel like with him, it was just, like, a, a trolling thing. You mm. trolling me if I'm drunk enough to entertain the shit, let's do it back. And every time all that shit was going on, I'm, like, making money every time, so. But that's sometimes, what I'm saying. You'll make money from that. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, sometimes when you in the mix and all that dumb shit going on, money is, like, ding, ding, ding in my sleep just because I'm the talk of the town right now. Mm. Like, so whenever I'm playing part and shit, it's because I'm getting money off that shit. Like, I'm not sitting going back and forth with nobody. I'm not typing back and forth with you off the internet. I'm not getting it. So I'm grown as shit. I got bills to pay. Like, if you don't involve no money, I'm not going back and forth with you. No like, that's, that shit is dumb. Like, that shit is stupid. Like, fucking with somebody to feel like, oh, because they higher than me, or oh, let me, so I can get some clout off this shit. That shit weak. Because mm. I ain't never got to do that to get the top spot. I ain't never had to do that to get where I'm at. I ain't never have to hate on nobody. I ain't never have to keep trying to pull motherfuckers down to get up. I don't do that. I be me and people fuck with me and people hate that. And if people like, oh, well, how do I get there? Let's let's throw shots at her. Let's do this. Let's do that. For what? I'm still going to be shuttling the MC at the end of the day. I think people see what happened is they they see that it's some type of success in it. We can't act like it's not, right? Like we've seen yeah. 50 Cent come up off of it. We've seen, uh, shit, there's been so many rappers in the street that came up off of like dissing. Like that used to be a thing. Yeah. Like I'm gonna diss the top nigga and then what's gonna happen is it's gonna generate cloud around me and then I fuck around and get a response. That's dumb. That's like me in Atlanta. Like who lit out here? Let me let me keep let me clout chase. Let me throw some shots at her. For mm. what? For what? Cause you might respond and then start something. For what? Then, you know what I'm saying? What, what do I find the time in the day to make my day about somebody else? No, I like I like Where that do bit. I find the time in the day to sit and respond to bullshit? I don't have that much time in my day. Mm. I got a roof I got to keep over my top of my head. I got a family back home that I take care of. I don't have time to be kicking about some shit. Like, that's dumb. For clout? For nah, Instagram facts. likes and views? We not getting no money off this? So the one you did get money off of, the ant shit, like you said. How, like, yeah, when I used to go back and forth with ant, ant talking about me by himself. I, got, I get from? money off that shit. Where you that, said what? Where that came from? I don't know. Just trolling. I feel like one time you try something, because I'm so big where I'm from, I guess him just fucking with me. Like, he, maybe it's just, I don't know. I, I'm <laughs> mad at we even talking about this shit because he's about to screen record and go live soon as he see this motherfucking interview. But I feel like, you know, you talk about me, the whole city of the like, ha, ha, ha. Like, it's funny. It's like, oh, y'all like when I talk about her? Let me keep doing it. Mm. But guess I get paid every motherfucking time when motherfuckers say my name. I promise you. Every time my name in the mix, motherfuckers go to my page, they click that link, put that visa I wake up, the new money. Every time y'all talking, every time a blog posts me, new money. I swear to God, all my life, God strike me down if I'm lying. So I, would, so I don't care. Keep talking all day long. Talk shit. Go live. Post a picture. I'm getting paid. I could give a flying fuck. Mm. I don't what, care. What was the craziest thing that that that, that might have came from left field from somebody was like, what the fuck is this? Like who? Like you don't have to say that name or nothing like that. But what was the craziest situation that you saw from back home? Like yo, what the fuck? Like, like somebody this like from? sending shots at me or something. Yeah.
when people be doing like this songs and we be like where the fuck did this come from like bitch like <laughs> what it the shit don't even be making sense but i don't care enough to get on the internet and be clearing shit up i don't care that's what they're going to do when you at the top they're going to do that when they not doing that you you doing something wrong mm. when they not hating you doing something wrong they not talking about me then then it's like oh shit people ain't talking about me people talk about me every day like you ain't got no haters you're not popping like that's how i look at it like i'm that lit that y'all want to talk about me Mm. I'm I'm fine with being the one y'all talking about. I'm not I'm never the one that's talking. You will never catch me in the comments. You will never hear me going back and forth. Like I don't do that. Big I don't get paid shit. to do that. Unless I'm getting paid, oh we could go back and forth all motherfucking day. But <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have that time on my hands. Big dog. I don't shit. have time to get on live every time y'all talk about me and explain my fucking self. I don't give a fuck. Once once like every time y'all talk, I get paid. Facts. I wake up the next morning. I don't even know what's been talking about. I'd be like, damn, what the fuck happened last night? Like, what the fuck everybody on my shit for? And people love it for entertainment, but I don't care. I'm grown as fuck. So DC DMV is the home place, right? Yeah. Um, you never look at it like, damn, bro, like, why niggas hate so much? Because I guess I see, we see it from, let's look at the, the, the top, top dog, right? It came out of DC, Wale. Yeah. I feel like every time I see on the internet. And they hate on him too. Right, every time I look it at it. It don't matter who you are. The bigger you get, people just hate. That's just... That's just what they do. They're going to do that anyway. In D.C., though, because in Baltimore. In Atlanta, they show fucking love. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, they say Baltimore is a crab in a barrel type city, too, but at the same time. I hate that we even talk about this, because then it's going to look like I'm trying to put down. But it's the truth. Like, what the fuck? Mm. It's the truth. I be out here, motherfuckers show love, and I ain't even got no clout out here. I'm a nobody out this bitch. People respect you. They don't, they don't look at you like they too good or, oh, who is this? She, she not invited in here or boom, boom. Nobody treats you like that. Everybody is pulling you up. They taking your hand and they gonna take you wherever you gotta go. So let's reset it real quick though. Come on, Shelly, you gotta, you, be real. It's, no, it's, it's, it's never a time where you like, man, I wish I got the, the love I get from out here or at, at other places from, from, my home, from my hometown. I don't look at it like I wish I got more love back home. Because at the end of the day, you got the people that I got. People do. It is people out there that love me. It, I got real fans out there. I got real supporters that's been supporting me from day one. So I don't ever want it to come off like I only see the hate. Because it's people. I remember their usernames. I follow half of them back on Twitter. I see the same people coming out of nowhere. They've been rooting for me. Even when it's like, oh, where the music at? Like, they come out of nowhere when I'm dropping it, when I'm posting it. You got people that really fuck with you. I see people some be defending me. When people talking shit, you got them real supporters that come in and be defending me. So it's mm. just like, it is love there. And I just look at it like that's what it's going to be. Them people I'll never forget who really supports me. Mm. And I'll be like, damn, they be, they, they be fucking with me since day one. They don't let the hate. They don't let the, you know what I'm saying? And then you got people in real life that really know me in real life. They fuck with me because they know me in real life. Like, you can't, you can't say you know me from the internet because mm. you don't know me. I don't, I'm not sitting here. Like, I did YouTube. You know, I'm showing my personal life. And I really feel like me when I used to do vlogs and YouTube and stuff like that, that's when I really got my loyal fan base. They used to watch me every day do personal shit, do regular life shit. Outside of music, outside of clout, outside of music videos and all of that type of shit. They watch my regular life. I'm recording my family. I'm recording my mom, my grandmother, my brothers, me moving out of town, me moving out here. Like, they see the real me as a real person. And them people be like, why the fuck do y'all hate her so much? What the fuck does she do? Mm. Because they know at the end of the day, I'm a real person. I don't be, it ain't like I be out here trolling and in drama i don't do shit i be in the house like i get my money i chill like i swear to god like i've never did anything to anybody so let me ask you this you know you said you moved out here you learned how to you found yourself kind of right yeah you had to find a, how to love yourself i saw the youtube thing and me personally i looked at it like man i wonder if this was a money play or was this something that she tapped into and she found out that she really loved? Which one was it for you? I ain't gonna lie to you, it's something that I really love. And mm. I always be thinking about coming back, but sometimes it's like, with my life right now, I'm not so interested in everybody being in my personal, personal business because sometimes my personal life is my privacy. That's kind of all I got. Mm. With so much attention on the internet, once you put them into everything, it's like I don't got that peace no more because now y'all, 
You get what I'm saying? And I'm getting older, it comes with maturity. When I'm young, it's like, I don't give a fuck. Let me show y'all everything. What's going on right here? When you get older, it's like, some things I want to keep to myself. But I enjoy being in front of the camera. I'm very open. I can talk. I'm a transparent post person. I'm an open book. With any friend I've had, anybody that knows me, I'm open. I don't hide nothing. I don't feel bad. I don't give a fuck. So that's just me. That's my... That's something I could do effortlessly, is just be open. Mm. I'm like that with anybody that knows me personally. Sometimes it's my downfall, because I get too open and I let the wrong people get too close, and I let them know everything, or to let them see everything, and people get comfortable. They feel like they use it against you, or whatever the case may be, but in front of the camera, the fans love it, because it's like she being real. I don't, get, I don't have to fake it. I don't have to act like I'm something that I'm not. I don't have to try to portray this image that I keep trying to keep up with. I be me. On a down day, on a bad day, on a good day, I ain't fixing no makeup and putting on wigs every day to impress y'all. I get on the internet when I'm looking a fucking mess. I get on it like I show the real me. When I'm having a bad day, when I'm doing YouTube, I'm crying on the fucking camera. Like, I'm not perfect. I know people that portray an image every fucking day. Mm. Holding money that's not theirs. Wearing clothes that ain't theirs. Trying to just prove fake shit. Like, all of that just to, I just want everybody to look at me like, I don't give a fuck how people look at me. So when I'm doing YouTube, they see that real part of my life. I could be, I recorded a video on a fucking blow-up bed in an empty apartment, and people love that shit. Like, this the raw, this the raw version of her. She giving it to us. I'm giving people advice, like, everything that I do. So it's just like, that was something I really enjoy. I feel like, yes, one day I want to get back to it, but it just had to be to a certain limit where it's not... I'm not showing sure literally everything. I really love, yeah, I love my, I love my life keeping it to myself because it's... That's my privacy. That's something that I don't have to, it's for me. You get what I'm saying? It's not something that I got to keep sharing with everybody. So once I learn how to do that and keep it to myself sometimes, it's like, well, damn. It's like, I, I see the value when I keep it to myself. Yo, I wanted to talk about this shit. We see the OnlyFans popping and shit like <laughs> I that, I already right? knew this was coming. We just want to talk about this, but I feel like, and anybody can excuse me if I'm wrong, you can interchange. I feel like, when you first came out, Shelly DMC was this rapper, hardcore, like you said, you was hood, yeah. all this and all that. I feel like not too many girls made that change. And the one person that I can think of, off Bucks, that made that change from like hardcore, or not even hardcore, but like tomboyish, to like full players, girl popping out, looking good. Yeah. It's Missy Elliott, bro. I don't know if you ever seen a picture of Missy Elliott recently. Not having seen it. You got to look at Missy that Elliott so recently. Random. Boy, she put a picture on Instagram. She looked good. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I swear to oh God. Oh, my God. He's funny. He's about no, to have me. No look cap. At yo, look at, yo, somebody like, pull up Missy that, Elliott, like, bro. I swear dying, to God. Look, he dying laughing because that was just so random. I didn't know who he was nah, about I to say. Nah, I say that to say. He come out of nowhere like Missy Elliott. I'm no, like, I, bro. I swear I seen him on Twitter. I'm like, yo, this is who? Missy Elliott? Can somebody pull up Missy Elliott, See, please, real quick? You know, like people like Sierra and all. No, but no, like, Sierra always was like a girly girl. Like always, she wore tomboy, but she was always a girly girl. Yeah. I feel like when I saw you, like on your rap shit, it was like. Y'all yeah, really used to be a tomboy. Yeah. Like. And now it was girl. like, Shelly dance MC dresses and ass out, and I seen somebody put on t Twitter like, oh shit, my boyfriend just uh like, like Shelly Shelly picture. I'm picture. like, shit is going crazy. You got shit going crazy. It's a whole That's different funny. type of Shelly the MC. Yeah. How is the new Shelly the MC, like this, this, like, you know, provocative, showing your body, only fans. Like, how is the transition? Like, how are you taking the attention differently? Like, how is that? <laughs> you like it? No, 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 no. You let, like let, it? No, okay. no, no. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Honestly, like, I'm in my own body. So it's like, y'all see the change more than I do. But when I step back and I look at like old pictures, I'd be like, damn, like, I really used to be like a tomboy. Mm. When I was growing up, I I always was around all boys. You get what I'm saying? So I was like really, really a tomboy. I used to really hang in the neighborhood, like really just think I was just this little like <sighs> Northeast baby for real. You get what I'm saying? Like I, I just used to think that shit was cool when I was young. You get what I'm saying? Getting older, growing up. Um, of course, I started getting like the red locks, and I still still had some of that tomboyish in me. So aggressive with my music because that's the environment that I grew up in, being aggressive and being masculine. You get what I'm saying? So in the household that I grow in, it's just, and that's what I'm learning about myself too, even moving here, just learning like, why have I been so masculine all my life? 
and mm. my image may have changed, but I started learning too. Like a lot of ways how I curb myself, I'm very independent. When it comes to niggas, I feel like I don't need one. And I used to ask myself, like, I never knew about this until like, I started watching this lady, she called, her name is April Mason. Mm. So it was basically like, just talking about like your feminine energy and your masculine energy. And when I started looking at all of the signs of just being so masculine, every sign matched me. And I never understood. Like what, before you go to, I never understood, like what, what signs? Um, one, of course, like I was in a little tomboy stage and stuff like that, but it comes with a lot of actions too. Feeling like you don't need nobody, very independent, very like, I'm doing all the roads that Looking a, back, a male, yeah. Where did that come from? My household, you feel, you how, like I you had to be how I was raised, how I was raised. You get you, what I'm do you saying? Feel like you Always. had to be by yourself? Do I ever feel like I did you did you at I, one point did you feel like you had to be super independent? Yeah, I was I feel like I was always like that because that's all I saw growing up. Mm. I seen all the women in my family there was never ever a man around ever. So the women in my family were the masculine ones, the the taking over, the you get what I'm saying that very dominant energy and I've always came off like that way. I've always been a lot around a lot a lot around a lot of males um growing up so that's that energy that I picked up on being outside and having a lot of male friends when I was in high school getting older like I thought all that shit was cool when all my friends was rapping I was rapping with them I never came off like the prissy girl rapping no I wanted to be just like them like we all was just on our nigga on our hood shit you get what I'm saying but growing up it started changing, of course. I'm becoming a woman. My body developing. Like, I'm getting a little butt. I'm getting a little hips. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm developing, and I'm feeling myself. You get what I'm saying? So certain times growing up, I would tap into just, like, you know, being cute. I like how I looked when I was getting a little girly a little bit. And I started liking it. Um, also, you just, you grow up. You get older. You get what I'm saying? And... I'm not a little girl. I'm not the same girl five years ago when I was, I'm a Northeast baby. This my, like, come on now, I'm 26. Mm. Like, I don't know how old I was when I made that, but I was probably about 20 when I made that song. And I was still young. I was still, I thought all that hanging outside neighborhood, like, oh, this my side of the jungle shit was cute. It's not. I'm not saying it's, it's not it, but it's not. Where my phone at? Like, don't, I what you about you. to pull up? I want to ask you something. Say so, my phone, but go I, ahead. I feel like the change comes with growing up. You get what I'm saying? Also, with growing up, you start getting in relationships and you start dealing with niggas. Like, I'm not on that hood shit no more. I got a nigga now. I got to be a girl. Like, sex appeal. Like, and it's something I've never, ever forced. It just came. And when it started coming, people were just shocked. And the value, start, not saying the value, but the shock value with just me. I remember my first photo shoot, I did it with True Story. The internet just like broke. Like, I was like, and it was just like, it was just cute. Like, it was my first. And I feel like when I used to take like little pictures, like showing stuff, like I was in a relationship and certain stuff I like couldn't do. So okay. once I finally got out that relationship, I was so like, once you oh got yeah. Them chains up off you? Yeah, once I got them, I was like, oh yeah, it's lit. I was with my friends, I was single for the first time ever. Like, you yeah, didn't. pool pictures, I'm about to fuck the gram up. Back then, you care about shit, like how many likes I'm getting on the picture. Now I can give a fuck. You, you deleted but the picture. What picture? You deleted the picture. I probably archived it because... I was about The that. one with the, I, the, the purple, is like purple. Yeah, you was like doing a split or some shit. I don't know if you was doing a split, but that's the picture that somebody put on Twitter said my... Uh, my boyfriend just like Shelly the MC picture on Instagram. It was... Oh, oh, recently? It was something like this. But that's a video. And yeah, I be archiving stuff because you want to go see it, go on my OnlyFans and see it. Okay. Sometimes I just take it off. What like, the fuck you be thinking when you be posting? I ain't like, gonna lie. You be fishing. You be like, no, look, let when me see I was, what these niggas talk about. No, look, when I was young, like I was saying, well, you young, you care about shit. Like, I'm about to fuck the gram up. This shit about to look sweet. Like, and they be going to, they eat it up every time. So, I mean, like, when I'm young, now when I get older, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I don't feel like doing it. But you just did it recently. You archived that shit. Let me tell you, I make money off doing that. Okay. So it's like, and I make it quick. So it's okay. like, sometimes, and I hate that I even talk, I'm even talking about this in this interview, but it's like, sometimes you just like, let me do what I got to do. People love it. So y'all love it. All right. Oh, well, let me, I'm not going to always be doing this shit forever, but it's a source of income now. Mm. So it's like, whatever. You said, some, you said something about uh, one time you was like, I guess people thought you was getting money or this new new fame and things because of OnlyFans. And you yeah. was like, nah, I've been grinding. I've been hustling. Yeah, like, I've been grinding. All this shit is, is just extra. Let me say the difference. 
I always been grinding. Always. I've always when I when I put the emphasis on being independent, I've always grinding. I've always had drive. I've always been working. I've been on my shit forever like and, it's, and I haven't been like where I am now like financially like back then but I was always grinding you get what I'm saying I'm always working I'm always getting shit done I'm always trying to make shit work and figure shit out I don't work jobs I don't do none of that shit like I'm a hustler I've always been an entrepreneur I've always been my own fucking boss mm. I make the plays in my life the ball is always in my court I'm always making shit happen so you go through like little things and people be like, oh, it's something, something, because the OnlyFans, boom, boom. Only so, OnlyFans was just a new source of income that I tapped into and I knew how to work it and knew how to make that shit work. But before that, I've been on my shit. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like These people don't know me from real life. Y'all looking at pictures and y'all judging me off of pictures. Y'all don't know what the fuck is really going on. You get what I'm saying? But of course, OnlyFans is easy money i've never done anything where money comes so fast and so fucking easily so talking about it and little shit like that if you if, if you knew what i was touching or if you could do it too and if you didn't give a fuck how people think like i don't give a fuck what people think you would be doing it too mm. and i ain't, it ain't like i'm doing anything crazy you get what I i'm think, saying i think that was a part of the transformation though like the shelly the mc the hardcore rapper and then this shelly the mc the almost an Instagram model. Like, it's a total yeah. different... It's like two different people. Like, it's crazy. I think it that is. was a part of the transformation. You don't think that kind of helped with the, the sex appeal and, and, and how people perceive you as this this newfound, you better not like her picture, Shelly the MC? <laughs> like, that's how niggas... Like, you are... Yeah. Did you ever people think... People always... Niggas always liked me, though. I've always been a girl in the city that niggas just had that crush or that fantasy or you get what I'm saying even before I was getting naked but once I started like show, they that's when it was just like crazy so you tell me on your OnlyFans you get naked no I feel like I got a girl I'm gonna be careful but I can say this fuck this I'm speaking for all my niggas out there I feel like girls that have OnlyFans and don't get naked bro I gotta be careful because they fuck around counseling me. Fuck yeah, I don't care. Listen, I feel like if you got OnlyFans and it's promoting all this naked shit and somebody going on your OnlyFans and it ain't naked, my niggas need a refund. That's how I feel. I feel like if you're promoting some sexy shit on OnlyFans and you creating this illusion of being naked and somebody go to your OnlyFans and it ain't nakedness and you said you, you got, was gonna be naked, but this niggas is how need that refunds. I never ever said anything. I never ever said yeah, I was fucking or like I've never came out my mouth and said that okay I clearly post my pictures people know what I do you got some people that complain like oh she ain't doing shit on here and you got people that love it mm. people that just want to see it so, so whatever it is is whatever whatever is fine at the end of the day people always complain but people are still subscribing so so that's good for you, but I feel like it's some OnlyFans finessers out there. That's going to be a new term. You OnlyFans finessers? A they girl, be saying I be finessing. What they, they be doing is they take a picture, they fuck around, put the emoji over like their, their, their bottom part yeah, and their top part. Yeah, I'm not doing part. all of that. I clearly like, you know what I'm saying? I'm having fun. I'm doing my thing. But that's what thing. they do, though. They put the emoji over their bottom part and their top part. They be like, go to my OnlyFans. You go to their OnlyFans, and then it's boom, you in a bikini. Like, what the fuck? Like, you could have put that shit on Instagram. <laughs> Like you got that shit over your, your your top and your bottom, and then you go on OnlyFans and it's a fucking bikini. Like I know this bitch ain't just get me for my. I got money. a question. I got a real question. I got a question for I you. My refund. Go ahead. I got a question for you. Now this is my interview for you. Uh oh. Which, Everybody always which, do that. Would you date a girl with an OnlyFans? Mm. And not only just date her, but would you take her seriously? Uh, I'm a different type of nigga. I don't know if you know, but I am. Um, but. That's a real question. And I know a lot of people question answers are different. So <sighs> look now I'm interviewing depends, you. You like depends. I gotta answer the question. No, it depends now. the type of relationship we got. Now, would I go in that's a different question. Would I date somebody with OnlyFans or would I go in a relationship with somebody that got OnlyFans? Two different questions. Yeah, that's why I would said, I okay, go into a relationship. relationship with a chick? Of course, dating, you probably like just we can No, nah, but I'm saying would I go into like let's say if like you got our OnlyFans, right? And I'm trying to, I probably wouldn't try to take you serious, of course. But if I get to know you, you got OnlyFans, that's you. I, I know you, you better than whatever the case may be. Now, we dating, you like, y'all want to do OnlyFans? I'm like, shit, we going to do it together? I need a part of the check. All right, all right, all right. This is a different question. So she's not doing anything. We're going to be OnlyFans, sling a dick. We're going to be sling a dick. We're going to be having sex together. We're going to be fucking together. We both fucking. We both getting money. You'll be in a relationship with them, though. Yeah, we're getting a bag oh, together. All right, all right, cool. 
when you see the money, you'll be like, I, I didn't dealt with niggas or talk to niggas. And I always on the outside, sometimes I hate it because I hate how I'm always viewed. When I'm meeting new people, and they, I hate giving niggas my Instagram. Like, mm. they see my Instagram. I want you to meet me for me. I don't want you to put this image together in your head or automatically think, oh, she's sweet or I can fuck her or oh, she ain't got no respect for her. So, because it's not that. At the end of the day, sometimes you do what you got to do. Just so. Go ahead. It's like sometimes you know what you got to do, but you got to get to know me personally to know like what this really is. But niggas that know me personally, I done sat down with so many niggas. When they see how much money I'm making, they like, you ain't doing shit. Like, keep doing that shit. So but they you, know me personally. From the outside, it's always a judgment. It's always a... God, bro. Don't cap me to death, bro. You sit here telling me that you ain't never used your Instagram for nothing, nigga. Not only fans, but you ain't never be like, oh, niggas want it. So, you know, because sometimes them naked pictures attract a certain type of nigga. You know, these scammers niggas get money. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never finesse your way into, like, a bigger bag with a nigga or nah? No? No. Damn. It's some girls out there like, damn, you crazy. But respect to you. No, nah, I get what you're saying, but I've always just been a type to go and get my own bag. And that's good. I, I just, I don't them. really care to... B, let me fuck with this nigga so I can try to get some money out of him. Mm. I, I'm I'm very well 100% confident in just getting that shit on my own. I'm always be like, why the fuck would I go try to get this out of nigga when I can go get this shit myself? Some girls would say, I don't know. And some people would say, but go ahead. Things have changed. Now I don't want to say things have changed, but I'm not, don't get it confused. I'm not about to be fucking with no nigga that ain't providing. Ooh, so you ain't about to fuck with a brother. So it ain't baby. using you. But I'm not fucking with no nigga that ain't providing. So let me ask you this. Have you... But I'm always had my own bag. Been showing more skin, right? Mm -hmm. Been more, being more sexy or provocative, whatever words you want to say. Has it been attracting a different type of nigga as far as and financially? It, 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 I don't want to say financially, but it attracts all bullshit. Okay. That's why I hate it sometimes because... Niggas just automatically think shit's sweet. I don't give a fuck what I post. You cannot get up on me. Mm. Like, you got to know me to know. You can't get up on me. Like, it's I've always been exclusive. I don't fuck with just anybody. I've never been the type to just fuck with any everybody. Like, but niggas think because you posting on the Instagram, they think, oh, she, she welcoming me in. It's like, calm down. And they don't ever come around with that real intention of really getting to know you. It's... They want to fuck mm. because of this is what I'm posting. So, yeah, sometimes it's like, damn, I hate doing this shit. That's why sometimes I get in my mode. I got off of OnlyFans in February. I got off that shit, and I was like, I'm not getting back on that shit. I deleted everything on my fucking account. Like, when I recently just got back on OnlyFans, recently, literally like a week or two ago, because I've been off of OnlyFans since February. I was like, I'm getting off this shit. I deleted everything in my fucking phone, everything in my camera roll. I wiped the whole fucking OnlyFans out. I didn't delete the count only because you got motherfuckers that do weird shit, go use your username, and then they be making money off whatever the fuck because they got Shelly and MC as their username. So I didn't delete it. I cleared everything the fuck out. I archived everything off my fucking page that was half naked. I was posting pictures, clothes on, all of that. And I was still grinding, still hustling, still making money, finding other ways to get money because I'm just like, damn, I want to do this shit, but... Ain't no money like OnlyFans money. I ain't gonna lie to you. So, man, that's why. But I, it's just sometimes it's just you don't like to keep Nick saying shit anyway. But it ain't fair, you know. bro. Like girls can do whatever they want. They get ass shots. They get titties done. They can do whatever you get on OnlyFans. Get money, bro. No, y'all can do whatever y'all want because y'all can't do all of this. Pay for this. Pay for that. All this fake shit that we do. But a nigga can go out and walk around with his dick and be on Instagram looking a fucking fool, ain't nobody gonna judge him. The next day, you could still walk what a woman. On everything we do get held, I'm just saying, everything we do get held against us. Against us. Our reputation, how we view. We gotta move. We gotta walk with a different step because we're a woman. You, Niggas can do any fucking thing. No, no, no. I'm a, I, I think nobody gonna be like, oh, he got an only Let's meet in the fair. Let's oh, that's, that's, that's meet in the middle. Women got a heart, but men got a heart too because I feel like, bro, a nigga can't even speak up nowadays. Like, a nigga can't even tell you his feelings without, oh, he a bitch. Oh, he cried too much. Like, bro, niggas got it hard yeah, out here. I ain't gonna lie. Niggas got to pay all of the rent. Like, what the fuck type world we live in? Like, I got to take care of me and you. Like, I seen this post on Twitter. The girl, they was like, women need to, like, it's okay to not deal with a nigga when he down, deal with a broke nigga we got to stop dealing with. And I'm just thinking, like, 
Bro, Let it's me so you. many niggas that deal with broke girls and love them until they come up, bro. Like, niggas got But no, y'all to. niggas are different. You can stay with a nigga when he down, when he ain't got shit, when he figuring it out. And you can love him at his fucking worst. When that nigga feel like he don't need you no more, he gonna shit on you. He gonna say, fuck you. And I, it literally, name a time where you say, I ain't gonna say name a time because you probably know, it's, it's probably a couple real niggas out there. But you stay down with a nigga at his fucking worst, that nigga gonna shit on you when he get up. He gonna cheat on you. He ain't gonna give a fuck about you when he don't need you no more. Mm. So that's why we be like, don't hold, like you can't be fucking with niggas when they low and trying to be to stay down and all that shit. I had to learn that and I will never in my life, God strike me down. Like, it's not happening. You be fucking with a nigga when he at his lowest for what? Trying to show you love him for him and not for his money. When you could go fuck with niggas that pay bills and niggas that take care of shit and niggas that'll spoil you the shit out of you and niggas that's really in their motherfucking bag, really lit, really got shit going on. And you be fucking with a nigga because you love him. And a nigga kick your ass like, fuck you when he get back on his motherfucking feet. I've seen it, it had it happen to me. I've seen it happen to so many people. I've heard the story so many times and you just, of course y'all niggas, y'all provide us. So when a girl down, you like, all right, boom. But at the end of the day, unless you a leech, you're not really trying to piggyback and get, get anything from a female. So you ain't really worried about if she down or she up. But then you got some niggas that as a female, you'll be down. You had them down times and niggas try, you got certain wild ass niggas that throw that shit in your face. Try to make it like, oh, you was broke or I'll be in a situation where I'm trying to figure shit out. We're not getting money. Literally, I'm not going to say you're not getting money all the time, but everybody has that down period when they were trying to figure it out before they got up there. Mm. Now, we've all had that moment, moments and you could be fucking with a nigga and a nigga try to talk down about you, tell shit the other motherfucker, try to make it seem like you ain't had shit going on, try to da 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 it's weird out here. So it's just like, honestly, like, but when it come to fucking with people when they at their lowest. Don't do it. No. They ain't gonna give a fuck about you once they don't need you no more. When they need you, it's all, it's all love. It's warm, warm. You there for them because ain't no fucking body else going to do it. You know what I'm saying? And when you, when they don't need you no more on my life, it's fuck you. They could give a fly. They gonna move on like they never even fucking... Like, you never even mattered. Like, you never existed. You know, um, I don't want to challenge your experience, but what I will say is, I think, and I talk about this often, probably not on the interview series, but, like, I had a relationship podcast talk about this. I think it's the whole dynamic of men and women is unfortunate because, me personally, I don't think that it goes down. I don't think it is, is as black and white as you just described it. I, I don't think it's like that with everybody either. Right, but I, what I will say is, even... Certain situations that do happen like that, but most right? of the time. No, but I think I don't think it's bl as black and white. And what I mean by that is, I don't think that a nigga get up and then he say fuck the woman, right? I think things happen in between, and then usually, this is sad, but usually what comes with power and money comes confidence. What, exactly. what happens, I read that in the book. I don't right. know if it was Steve Harvey or whatever, but when they get they get that confidence and they feel like, oh, they want to try to go get, they want to see what type of woman they can get. They they feel like, oh, oh, I'm lit now. Bitches looking at me now. I want to see what up with all these bitches is paying attention to me. Like like an ego thing. But fuck the bitch who been there when I was nothing, when I had nothing, when I when wasn't shit going on, when I couldn't do shit for her. And she was, and that's how it is. And the motherfucker will walk off like you never was ever there and they won't give a fuck. So yeah, when you fucking with these niggas, don't fuck with these niggas for free. Don't fuck with no niggas that ain't providing. Don't be going through shit with no nigga that a nigga ain't gonna go through with you. That's how you gotta look at it. And play these niggas how the fuck they gonna play you cause what the fuck that shit, after you learn that shit, you be like, oh, nigga can't, st nigga can't come in my life right now nigga ain't paying no motherfucking bills. Oh. I live in a high rise. <laughs> All that, oh, love you for who you are, you ain't got shit, we can't do nothing for me, where? Because I'm not Lil Shelly, Lil Northeast baby. Shelly, they ain't had shit to her name that was living in my family house. They ain't had shit going on. That's when I was accepting niggas for who the fuck they was. Now, no. I no. get it. So, and I, I won't have to go through that again. And I see is this, this part is probably a little triggering. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, when I was saying confidence, I think, you know, you it's sometimes, I don't think it's as black and white because I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But what happened is, when a nigga is broke or a nigga's in a different situation, sometimes niggas be looking for love too. And what happened is sometimes niggas don't have the confidence to leave a situation that they that they know they should leave it because their ego they don't have they, their, their ego isn't built up. 
their confidence isn't strong. But when you get that money and you, and I'm not saying it's right, but sometimes when you, when you, when your life changes, your life change, right? So now when you get money, guess what? You can go to therapy. When you get money, you understand your self worth. But when you, when you, when you, when you at the bottom, you don't, you don't understand your self worth. You letting a lot of, you letting a lot of things rock that shouldn't rock. But then when you feeling good about yourself, you understand that damn, I'm better than this situation. And I'm not. That's why I say. I think it's unfortunate not saying it's okay because what happens is the dynamic change. Because when I get my confidence, if it happens to be when I got money, it looks like, damn, I left her because I got money. You get what I'm saying? It looks like, damn, I left her because I, my situation changed. And I feel like it's not as black and white all the time, but it's unfortunate because nobody should feel like that. You feel me? I don't want a man to feel like that, a woman to feel like that. And I'm listening to you and I can hear the pain and it's like, damn, like, Honestly, like not on my soapbox, shit, I'd be like, I, I wish like we could all get along and like you know love each other the, the, the right way. But it's like you know, I honestly we ain't really we ain't really learn how, we don't know what love look like. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we be loving people through pain that that, yeah. that that's toxic and we shouldn't be loving them through. And then by the time we we get ready to leave, and by the time we are ready to leave, it look different through our, each other's eyes. If that makes sense, you know what I'm but trying I, to say? Yeah, and that's what I feel like because of how niggas move when you. You helping niggas out, or and I'm not gonna say helping niggas out, but you being there for niggas when they not in certain situations because y'all go through that dynamic. As a woman, when, once you learn that and you learn the game, you know don't take no nigga who ain't got what she said. Can't 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 fuck with he ain't got more than me or whatever the case may be. You gotta look at it like I want a nigga on the higher status than, status than me. I want a nigga making more money than me. Cause at the end of the day, why the fuck would I put myself in a situation with a nigga? And let him live with me. Let him drive my car. Let him do this. Let me do that. You stand with that nigga. That nigga get back on his feet or still be fucking around, still be cheating, still disrespecting you, still not giving a fuck. And out of love, because we love so fucking hard. So why should you a man do that? Fucking so, with a nigga. So just curious. Why as a woman, I got my own. So okay. as a woman, I got my own. I'm not needing a man for anything. And that's why when I say... It's not always, I don't always need a nigga because at the end of the day, I'm going to make sure I can do for myself whatever I need you to do for me. That's just how I roll because I've always been independent and never took anything from a nigga. Can we get no shot but for now that? it's more so I could do for myself. I, I pay my own bills. I pay my own rent, my own car note, phone bill, whatever the fuck it is. Everything paid, hair Head done, nails done, nails done, done everything, everything did. Everything, <laughs> I don't give a the fuck. Sink is crazy. A nigga can leave out this door and I won't lose nothing. Mm. You get what I'm saying? A nigga could be like, oh, I don't fuck with her no more. And I'm still going to be straight. So when it comes to it. Did she pull that much for you? I like, don't know. I hope so. I yeah, a lot. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Take a shot to hell down But a shot to that. Good. And it's just, and every woman is not like that. I know certain women that want the nigga with money, but they don't got shit. They don't got mm. shit on their own. They don't know how to get the money on their own. They don't know how to do anything. It's more so the man has to literally do anything. And I ain't bashing, bitch, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just the type of how I've been taught and how I've been raised. I'm always going to have my own. So if I'm fucking with a nigga that got money and he leave today on the mall, I still got my crib. I still got my car. My bills still paid. I ain't missing out on meals. I ain't missing out on shit because I still get money and I still hustle. But you got some women, they could fuck with a nigga, have bags, designer, out of town, trips, all that shit. They start fucking with that nigga. They ain't living. They ain't got no crib no more. They back with their family. They ain't got no type of car. Nigga and took back all the shit that he done gave you and now you asked out you gotta go find another nigga with money to sponsor you I'm not that type I feel like I got just, my own shit you just blessed me with so many like woman empowerment shit that like I can, <laughs> I can I'm gonna post all of that shit and this is gonna go crazy on the internet cause girls gonna yeah. be like yeah cause that's, that's me that's big shit you really got females out here that literally don't have nothing and don't know how to get no money don't know how to do nothing but expect the nigga to do everything and if a nigga don't do one thing they cutting that nigga off I know bitches like that and it's like, you don't even know how to do, you don't even got shit, you don't even make your own money, or you don't even got, you can't even get yourself what you're trying to get him to do. Mm. I'm not that type. At the no, end of fact. the day, it's like, I'm going to get on my own. I, I've been getting on my own all my life. Like, Toast it up. You ain't drink this shit. Oh, oh, yeah, she did. No, she she poured a big shot. Facts, like that's why I said pour your own poison. She's trying, like, listen, this don't got shit to do with uh Mr. J Hill Network or J Hill none of that (laughs) shit. That was T. She on her own, but um, (laughs) Shelly, damn, we 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 get deep. What's up with the music, dog? I just drop music, man. All right, so listen, I feel like I'm a real bad perfectionist. That's one. Mm. So I always want things to be perfect because I know the potential in certain things that I've created. I've, I'm sitting on music right now that I still haven't dropped and I've been holding. 
I got certain songs I made when I first moved out here, and they still not out yet. I also, when I first came out here, I did not have a team. And like I said, I'm out here with no friends, no family, no nothing. I'm meeting people from scratch, from literally nowhere. The industry out here is fake as fuck. I'm not into the fake shit. I'm a homebody. I don't really be outside as much as I want to. I'm not into the clout chasing shit. I don't give a fuck about what's going on outside or all the celebrities. Oh, my God, let's run out. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Like, so... Of course, with the time I've been here, I could have been doing more and building a team, but I'm always in my mind like the time is going to come. I also dealt with a lot, like my first year here, like I've had to really sit down with myself. It's more things going on in real life than it was about the internet. And of course, like with my fans and stuff, people are like, well, what's going on? What's this and what's that? Like people don't really, nobody thinks like, well, what the fuck does she be going on in her personal life? My first year here was the roughest year of my fucking life. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I'm going through shit. I'm going through depression, anxiety. I'm, I'm going through so much shit where it's to the point where I'm not even creating every day. I'm not even in the space. I'm not even around the right people that can even help me get things done. But I'm doing the best I fucking can. I'm keeping a roof over the top of my head. That's one. I don't have a fucking job. I don't have a guarantee. I know where you live at, too. That shit so, is expensive as fuck. Yeah, I don't, it's expensive as fuck. I don't live in no fucking... I don't live on no outskirts. Like, bitch, I'm in the middle of fucking Buckhead. Give me my props. That's one. No I'm taking care of me. I understand. Trust I'm me. I'm taking care of people back home. Nobody on the internet knows this. What the fuck? Where I'm sending money to. Where I'm making sure people straight. And I'm making sure the roof is over top of somebody else's head as well as mine. Y'all don't know... You could never understand why I grind like I do. Like when Nikki said that, like big on that. And it's like one thing that I learned too, and I seen this, I don't know if it was on TikTok, whatever. Somebody said, you cannot, it's hard to create when you're in survival mode. Mm. Oh, I'm so God. busy out this bitch trying to fucking survive that I don't even have no creative. I'm not even sitting in the creative Nigga, mode. Fuck creating. It's not to... even. I'm trying to. I'm survive. hustling, <laughs> bitch. I'm I'm hustling. Like bitch, if it's promo features, OnlyFans, boom, boom, boom. Y'all not understanding stories that I'm hearing back home, and I'm trying to make sure my family's straight. Y'all not understanding me crying myself every crying myself to sleep every fucking night because not only am I taking care of myself, I'm taking care of my fucking family. Mm. You will never understand why the fuck I'm showing ass. I'm showing ass that I got to get this fucking money. Mm. And I got to send this money somewhere else and making sure somebody else straight. That's what I'm doing it for. It's not, oh, because y'all, like I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, I need some validation. Bitch, I know I look good. Like, I ain't tripping off with a nigga, how a nigga got to see my body. I'll be fully clothed every day. Like, you get what I'm saying? But sometimes you doing what you got to do. And in the midst of that, I don't have a team. So when I'm trying to shoot videos on all of that, it's kind of like, even if I had the fucking money, when and I had the money, you get what I'm saying, to shoot videos and to do this and that. I would be at the video shoot by my fucking self. I won, I gotta find cameramen, I gotta find people that's out here. The but it's people ain't shooting 300, 400, all 500, 600. Yeah, this type of video, they not doing this shit back I mean. home. Like, <laughs> ain't no cheap shit. My fuckers want like 2,000 just to shoot. Mm -hmm. I gotta pay my rent just to shoot a video. No team. Nobody putting together nothing, hair, wigs, makeup, outfits, shit, booking a location. I'm by myself out this bitch. I'm not signed behind no label. Ain't no budget put behind me. I ain't take out no fucking loans. I don't scam. I'm not doing anything that's illegal. I make all my fucking money legally. I'm keeping a roof over the top of my head. I got to keep groceries in my fridge. I'm sending money back home. Hair got to be done. Nails got to be done. I'm stressed the fuck out. I could be going through relationship problems. I'm stressed the fuck out. I'm stressed out my whole fucking first year here. Do you think, of course, here and there, I'm writing, little shit, but you can't create when you're in survival mode. It's all about fucking surviving out this bitch. And any little wrong move, I can lose my spot. Or back home, my family can lose their spot because I'm the one taking care of everything. You get what I'm saying? Don't nobody think about that type of shit. Don't nobody think why she doing what she doing, what she doing. A motherfucker could never say I ain't getting no money. You get what I'm saying? And another thing is I always look at it. When you start... Loving yourself and you start coming at peace with yourself, you start coming at peace with your journey and you confidently know that my time is going to come mm. in due time, whenever God's ready to give it to me. So what I always say, I would tell friends, they would press me out. You could be going outside, you da, 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 da. like shut the fuck up because if you was in my shoes, you wouldn't know how to handle this shit. You cannot walk a mile in my fucking shoes. You don't do what I do. 
fans, people in the comments talking shit, she could be da 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 da. Of course, I got the potential to be doing a lot of shit, but you can't live a fucking day of my life and you will try to understand how the fuck is she doing this shit? How the fuck is she still out here? Because a motherfucker would have been went home if you knew what I've been going through all this bitch. You would have been left, you would have been crumbled, you would have been folded. So when it comes to creating, I'm not gonna lie. The creative shit, I be in my mind sometimes, shit cross my mind sometimes, I might write a little something. But my first year, I'm trying to survive. I'm hustling. Everything but that shit, like. I'm, I'm going through so much shit, I'm stressed the fuck out. I, I deal with severe anxiety. Like, now I take ashwagandha and shit every day to help with my anxiety, learning how to, like, I'm having thoughts of death and I'm having thoughts like, you never know what the fuck somebody really could be going through behind closed doors. Mm. Internet, I'm seeing negativity all fucking day. Mentally, I'm not even in the right space, but nobody knows because I never look like it. I'll never show it. I don't look like what the fuck I'm going through. I'm still making it look good. I'm still popping out. I'm still taking pictures, still on OnlyFans, still, whole time mentally, I'm fucked up. Damn. Don't nobody know what the fuck I'm going through. So, no, I wasn't in the studio. Another thing, all that shit, taking care of people, making sure everything's good, doing this, doing that. You know how much studio time calls out this bitch versus back home? I'm not going to no cheap shit out here, be in the middle of nowhere. I'm out here by myself, ain't got nobody can run and, and pull up and some shit pop off, like, and I'm by myself. Like, for me to be somewhere safe, somewhere that makes sense, that shit costs. And then even, like, I want you to talk about this because... I know you had to deal with this because back home you probably can go to the studio and and, and play the Shelly the MC card like oh that's Shelly the MC pull up I got you anything when out I, here when I come home you, anything out here don't like give regular. a fuck about that shit <laughs> like niggas like nigga what like, don't nobody give a fuck about none of that shit and people don't look at it like n nobody would never understand unless they had your shoes on yo how was you dealing with that though just coming out here you leaving DC Shelly the MC yeah coming out here really a nobody. Like, starting over. I ain't over. gonna lie. That shit is Let crazy. me tell you something. I <laughs> ain't I gonna lie. I went to go host, nigga said a price. I said, boy, you <laughs> fuck out of here. Like, you crazy. My like, thing is, my dick. the crazy part is, when I started dealing with that, at first, I ain't gonna lie, when at first, it kind of like, it, it don't get to you, but you just be like, damn, all that hard work I put in means nothing. I'm sorry from scratch. Mm -hmm. Motherfuckers don't give a fuck about your blue check. Everybody got blue check. That they don't give a hit. fuck about your hundred some thousand followers. Everybody, Everybody got, got followers. <laughs> Motherfuckers got millions of followers. They don't give a fuck if you the top bitch, whatever the fuck, top nigga. They don't give a fuck about none of that shit out here. You is nobody when you come out this motherfucker. You, you started from bumps. ground fucking one. But you know what it was for me? I love that shit because mm. I was looking at it like, it's just time to do this shit all over again. At the end of the day, I know who I am. I know my talent. And I'm a firm believer on my time is going to come. Let's go. I came out here from the grace of God. God sent me out here. If it wasn't meant for me to be here, I would have been back home. I pray to God. I pray to my mother. My mother's protecting me. I got to keep my mother ashes in my house. No cap. I'm big on that. I'm protected by my fucking angels. You got to understand that. My time is going to come. I feel like God had to send me down. I had to find myself first. Mm. I couldn't be out here running around, just blow up as soon as I get out here. If it was fucking easy, everybody would fucking do it. You would see everybody from D.C. out this bitch blowing the fuck up. It's not easy. And people don't look at it like that. They look at it like, oh, she could be doing this. Oh, she could be doing that. Come do it then. Mm. You, you come do it then. Since, show me a tutorial then since you know what the fuck you're doing. Like, seriously. That shit on YouTube. Like, Let me watch that. <laughs> like, seriously, tell me what the fuck to do since you got all the motherfucking keys. But honestly... That time that I spent alone, that time that I spent away from being Shelly the MC and being Michelle, mm. I needed that time. I don't ever feel bad about that time. I don't regret it. I don't regret not dropping music. I don't feel bad because at the end of the day, in my personal life, I was living real life, shit that had nothing to do with the internet. Mm. I had to find myself. I had to love myself again. I had to learn myself. I had to see certain sides of myself that I've never seen before. Every When you live by yourself and you're alone and you're never around people, it's so much shit that you go through. You do real shadow work. You heal from real fucking trauma. Mistakes that I've made, I'm learning from. I'm learning how to be a better fucking person. I'm learning how to pay bills. I'm learning how to make money. I'm learning how to fucking survive. I'm learning how to get to that next level. At the end of the day, I'm grinding. I didn't drop the clothing line. I'm making money. I'm doing shit. Whether if y'all talking about if I'm doing enough for y'all, at the end of the day, I'm still out here. Cause I know people that come out here and they go right the fuck back home. I know a couple that people. That pressure hit their ass and they be right back home. I never quit. 
I've never gave up. I tell friends, I tell whoever, my time is going to come. It's going to come. Whether it come with a record deal, whether it come with another hit song, it's going to come on God's time. I'm enjoying my journey. When it comes to people not knowing me out here, I fucking love it. Mm. I could be a normal person. Ain't nobody coming with no fucking motives. Ain't nobody trying to use me for no clout. Ain't nobody trying to, niggas ain't coming around. Oh, oh, people treat me like a normal person. I can go to the grocery store and I can shop. Mm. I can go to the mall and I can mind my fucking business. Don't nobody bother me. I can walk in and out of my, I can't do that back home. I can pump gas and nobody in my fucking face. That's peace. No, like, look at that. I'm not pressed to blow up. For what? If I'm getting money, why the fuck would I care? I'm getting paid. My rent is paid. My family rent is paid. My hair done, my nails done. It's food in my fridge. I'm fucking blessed. You think I give a fuck about followers and lit and the whole city know me? I could give a flying fuck if these people know me. Mm. I'm gonna get money. I've been getting money since I came out this bitch. I've been put in situations back up against the fucking wall. And I've been hustling my way through every fucking obstacle that has ever came my way. I get fucking money. I'm going to get rich before I fucking die. I'm going to get rich or I'm going to die trying. And fuck a record deal. Fuck, I don't want to say fuck rap shit. But fuck the internet. Fuck clout. Fuck all that shit. I'm going to get money. Mm. That's all I care about. I get money. All I really want to do is get money. I could give a fuck about what comments talking about she not doing enough and boom, 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 and millions of followers. And I want a million dollars. I don't care. I can walk everywhere and nobody can know me. That shit is fucking peaceful. Everybody want to be at the top and everybody want clout until you know what it feel like. Until you can't walk out your door without a motherfucker in your face. Until you can't pump gas. Until you can't go to the grocery store. Until you can't drive right here without motherfuckers recording your car and recording everything you're doing. That shit not peaceful. That shit, what you, people press for that shit. I have friends press for that shit. When they got it, they hate it. You want everybody to know you. You want to be famous so bad. I'd rather be rich. Mm. I'd rather make investments. I'm learning how to invest. I'm learning building credit, how to invest money, how to get properties, how to do this. That's the shit I care about. Shit that's going to last long when I can log out my fucking phone and still be a nobody and still be paid. That's what I care about. Eventually, I'm going to have a family one day. You think I give a fuck about Instagram? My gift, my talent is going to come. I'm so content. I'm so satisfied with where I'm at that I know and I'm so confident in knowing that my time is going to come God's going to give it I don't have to rush it I don't cry myself to sleep tonight because I feel like oh my god I can be a bigger rapper I don't feel like it's any competition or that oh my god what somebody else is doing that should be me I don't feel like that because my time is going to come and one thing about me nobody's going to do it like me this talent never goes away this pen and this pad what I write nobody can write that like me the industry is missing me. The industry need me. I don't need the industry. That's what I look at it like. Regardless, I'm going to get money. Regardless, I'm going to be good. If I log the fuck out and deactivate everything, I'm still going to get money. I'm still going to be fine. I'm still going to be out here. So people not knowing me and re reaching out to people and people feeling like, oh, I'm not nobody, I could give a flying fuck. Because mm. at the end of the day, I know my time coming, and I'm saying people come back around. Guess what the answer is going to be when they trying to fuck with me? No, because you got real people that stick with you when you at the bottom and when you trying to figure it out. Them the people I stick with because they had no motive. They wasn't looking at it like the benefit I can get from this. They fuck with me when I'm figuring it out. Those are the people that you want around because when you up high and all this famous and oh my God, I'm lit. I just got a record deal. I got the hottest single in the fucking world. Everything is fucking fake. Nobody's your friend for real. Niggas ain't trying to fuck with me for me. Niggas trying to fuck with me for clout. Niggas trying to fuck with me to show. I deal with that shit back home. Nobody genuinely, niggas that I deal with, they want clout. They don't fuck with me for me. They want to show everybody, oh my God, I fuck with Shelly. Friends, they want to be around you to be in your fucking business. They don't fuck with you. The hold some type of weight on you. Nobody's fucking with you. I don't have nobody back home. I fuck with family. I go home for my family. That's it. Not nothing else. And I'm going to get my bread and I'm going to step. I don't give a fuck about no attention, about no blue check, about no followers. Am I getting money? That's why I don't go back and forth. I don't diss nobody. I don't got time to be typing back and forth and arguing with you. Is this going to pay my bills? No, I'm grown as fuck. I, don't, I could care fucking less. It's going to come. My time is going to come. Remember this. You're going to have this video. They're going to have this shit. 
It might be five years later, 10 years later, who cares? My time is gonna come, but am I rushing it? Am I so eager to blow up? No. No. Long as I get money, I'm good. I could never blow up and still get rich and still get money, still invest, still do every fucking plan that I got on my motherfucking list. Still travel, still make money, still get a big ass house. Still, when you know that and you got that power, it comes naturally because you're not chasing it. You attract it, you don't chase it. I don't have to chase it. I know people that chase it every day, every fucking night. They chasing fame and they not getting a fucking dollar, they broke. They don't get paid for shit they do. You just always chasing it to be in the mix. You ain't getting no money. You ain't paying no bills. I'm getting money. I can sit in the house all, I've been in the house for two years. My bills paid. Do you feel like it was a, a, a time in the, it was a time in your career where you was just chasing the fame and you weren't getting no money? When I was young, and when I had followers, I used to be young, and I used to think that shit was lit. I was fucking broke. I made a song called 50K, it's on SoundCloud. You can go listen to it right now. I said 50K on Instagram, zero in my pocket. I was fucking broke. Trying to get lit on Instagram, so lit in the DMV, got followers, got pictures, oh, I'm lit, everybody know me, broke. When you an adult, don't give a fuck about that. I gotta keep this, gotta get this rent paid. Every 30 days, that rent coming the fuck back around. I'm trying to get a better car. I need a bigger spot. My family gotta be good. I'm sending they rent money over. I'm not only taking care of myself. My family got to be straight. Anytime somebody needs something, they call me. I got to give it because out of, out of my heart, that's what I do. I love doing that, being able to take care of who I got to take care of and making sure everybody's good. That's what I do this shit for. Attention, comments, everybody come look at me, a million views. I could give a flying fuck. But that shit comes naturally, and I know it's going to come because I don't chase it. Being on the other side of it, right? You getting the money now. You taking care of yourself. Do you think the passion for music is still there now that you're getting the money? I feel like the same it's passion? still there. I feel like my same passion is still there, but I've, got, I've gotten very distracted my first year here because I was so busy focusing on making sure I was straight, keeping my roof over the top of my head, how I'm going to make this money. Not only how am I going to make this money, how I'm going to make sure everybody I fucking love that I would die for back home, I got to make sure they straight. So... Distractions came and I wasn't able to focus on it. And that shit used to stress me out. Like, damn, I'm not doing this. Times I didn't cry on the phone to my friends. Like, damn, I'm not rapping. Like, it's shit that I'm trying to do. I don't have a team. I don't have this. When you are trying to work with people, people out here ain't trying to fuck with you because you ain't big. You not lit out here. So people act like they trying to work with you, then say fuck you. You try to shoot a video. Motherfuckers hit you up. I'm also a female cameraman. If you ain't fucking with them or fucking them, they don't want to work with you. Because they know I don't have the biggest, biggest budget, but that's what we deal with as women. Producers, cameramen, if you're not fucking with them, you don't, people don't know what the fuck I go through. I didn't met so many fucking cameramen. If you're not fucking these cameramen, they're not trying to shoot for you. That's how it is. Whether if you can have every dime in a motherfucking book, I don't have a manager out this bitch. If I didn't have a manager and I'm specifically talking to them on a personal level, trying to get a video shot, they're trying to fuck me. If I don't fuck them, I'm not getting shit. I'm getting ghosted. Producers, whatever the fuck it is. Y'all don't know what as women as we fucking go through. And you trying to build a team, cameramen, photographers, weird ass fucking photographers trying to fuck you. Y'all don't know what we go through. Mm. So it's like, damn, how the fuck do you really win? Until you get somebody to step in line and do this business for you and people to really take you fucking serious. On top of me having the OnlyFans, this is how I make my money. So nobody's really, really taking me serious. They looking at it as sex off the jump. So I go through a lot of shit. When I just shot my Give It To Me video, everything fell in line. I took a risk because there's times where I always, I'm always having a lot of money, but I'm taking it and doing other shit with it. And I'd be like, damn, all them times I could've just shot the fucking video. I could've just did this, I could've just did that. But at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer on things are gonna happen when it's supposed to. When I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna take this money and I'm gonna shoot a video. Fuck it, I don't give a fuck, I don't care no more. It's actually when I just start putting my foot down. Like, I don't give a fuck no more, I got shit I gotta do. If I don't do it now, it's never gonna get done because another two years gonna pass and ain't shit gonna happen. Fuck it, we gonna shoot it. That song, of course, the DMV is hating all the time. But at the end of the day, when I shot it, everything felt right What's in place. What song? What you mean he was hating? Um, give it, I just dropped a video called Give It To Me. It's a music video. <laughs> no, I just dropped a music video. It's called Give It To Me. And I was sitting and I was just like, 
I've been made that song in January. I made that song like January. And honestly, I was in the house, I was cooking. I've, since I moved out here, I've been learning how to cook, and I really be cooking all the time, having fun. When I'm cooking, I don't feel stressed on my body. I like cooking because it gives me like this peace. I don't know what it is. When I cook, I just feel creative. I cre I don't know. It's like when you're in the shower and you think all this creative shit. When I'm cooking, that's when I just feel I'm in my feminine energy. That's another thing. And I'm just, Shout you know, the I'm, feminine I'm, energy. yeah, big on the feminine energy. I'm in my feminine energy, and I'm cooking, and I'm chilling, and I'm, I always listen to music from the 2000s. I'm a, I'm a 90s baby, but 2000s is the time where I really understood music, and, you know, I was listening to that song. I was listening to Jay-Z. I just, I just want to, what is it? I just want to love you. Don't get me wrong, because I'm, I'm a little drunk That's right it? Now. You ain't even drinking like that. No, so no, I'm a little I'm drunk, drunk right now. I'm drunk. You're no, no, no. It was Jay-Z. It's I Just Want to Love You. Okay. Yeah, I ain't tripping. That's the name of the song. And then it's with Pharrell, Give It To Me. I'm playing. I always play all the 90s, the 2000s. That's all I listen to in the car. Don't get in my car. That's all we listen to. I'm not listening listen to no new shit unless it's Baby. I ain't listening to shit else. I listen to all. So I just got my playlist, Pandora on the TV. The song playing, I'm cooking stuff fucking sound, man. Like, literally, I remember the day, the song playing, and I'm listening to the beat. Because I'm like, I need to do a freestyle, another freestyle. So what the fuck? I'm like, damn, this I like this beat. I'm about to rap to this. So I'm making a song, and they like, give me that sweet, that nasty, that gushy stuff. And I'm in my mind, like, I'm in my mind, like, damn, that Louis, that, that Louis, that Finny, that Gucci stuff. Then... I, the next line was in my mind, like, Gucci stuff, what the fuck went wrong with that? And I came with Gucci. And I was like, then it turned into a sex song. I actually said that and started writing to it. When I dropped the song, this is my first song. I'm like, this shit a hit. We didn't let everybody in fucking Atlanta listen to this shit. They fuck with it. I posted on my page, people fucking with it. The moment it hit the blogs, fuck that shit, fuck that bitch, this shit dumb, well, da, 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 hate. They don't, the hate don't come to the blogs post. My real supporters that follow me, that when I post something, they see it exactly when I post, they was fucking with it. The moment it hit the blogs, they ain't fucking with it. So I'm just like, they they gonna do that anyway. That's just how they do. Do you think like the blogs, because y'all got a y'all got a big blog back home, like we the got DMV big blogs. Hood, they D post every fucking thing I do. DMV hoods and news, like do you think they show you in a, a, a negative light on purpose, like intentionally? Not nah, honestly. I don't think they showed me in a negative light. Like, I know, like, DMV Hoods and News, I know him personally. He don't do anything, like, negatively. Like, he's not saying anything negatively when he posts. You get what I'm saying? I fuck with him. Like, at the end of the day, we had, like, little issues, like, way back years ago. But at the end of the day, his job is his job. I don't get mad at shit that they post. That's your job. Do what you going to do. Same way I get paid for what I do, you get paid for what you do. If you got something to talk about, people going to go off, go off. I don't get mad at them because people want to come and say, and like, do what you got to do. I love when they post that shit because every time y'all post, I get paid. Mm. So I give a fuck. But all this hate off a song, but I was just so happy because I'm like, damn, I got music out and this shit a hit. At the end of the day, I can go play this shit at every, get every fucking DJ. I can pull up to the club every night of this week and pay $100, $200, $500, whatever the fuck they want to pay my shit and guarantee people in Atlanta gonna fuck with that song. But because it's in the DMV, because it's me, Northeast baby, y'all wanna hear all that hard shit and I'm growing up into a woman and now it's all, oh, she wanna talk about sex and I'm a fucking grown ass woman. Like, what the fuck do you think I was about to come out here and talk about Southeast? And be talking about the motherfucking block. I'm in the trenches on the da da da. This like the ops looking for me. I'ma pop pop. I'ma shoot them. I'ma pull out the A. Like, I'ma pull out the glizzy with the. What y'all thought the fuck I was about to talk about? Let I'm me a ask you this though. Woman. So being a grown woman, right? What the fuck did y'all think I was about to talk about? I need a freak ass nigga. Yeah, that's what I did. I, I mean, every word I said. You can't, you can't ignore this though. <laughs> I feel like it was times where we we used to like our favorite rappers, and then they started rapping about other things because their life changed, and then we didn't like them as much. Do you understand that directly now? Or was you ever one of them people that was like, you ain't like a rapper because they I start? I understand it. Because mm. people are like, no, where's Northeast baby? This ain't her. How you going to say this ain't me? Do you know me? Mm. Like, do you be in the bed with me? Like, <laughs> do you know? Like, I'm a grown ass woman at the end of the day. Y'all can't handle growth right now, but y'all understand it later. I don't live there anymore. I moved here for a reason. I could push that shit out here and that shit going to blow up. Coming soon. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, these people out here don't know me from nowhere. So I'm sorry from from scratch. So that's another reason why sometimes I don't even give a fuck about what people back home talking about. I, I don't even live there. All the shit y'all talking, these people out here don't see the shit y'all talking. They don't. They don't even know what the fuck. I could be like, they t where where they talking the shit at? Where they when you see it? They don't give a fuck. They don't know shit. 
But I don't know, nobody trolling me, and I don't want to say no names, but they don't know these people. These people dissing me, they ain't see it. So out here, it's like a clean slate. I'm a new woman. You're going to have to accept that. You're going to mm. have to deal with that. Every song that I got that I got in the vault right now, it's, I'm a grown woman. I'm not talking about the trenches. I don't live in the trenches. I'm, in, I'm living in fucking luxury. Luxury. I'm a grown-ass woman. I pay bills. I do what the fuck I want. I say what the fuck I want. I'm not talking about no ops. I don't have no ops. I'm not beefing with nobody. I'm grown as fuck. Mm. We're not talking about no ops, no trenches, no, oh, I was in Northeast with the da-da-da-da-da and <laughs> these ops and these niggas and all of my niggas and gang, gang, gang. Like, y'all not hearing that shit no more. Deal with it. It ain't nothing you can do about that. Like, this is me. This is the new Shelly. I love who I am. Y'all have no choice. You love it or hate it. I don't care. I don't even live there anymore. So it's like, y'all just going to hate regardless. But you got real supporters. I ain't even going to lie. It ain't started getting hate until the blogs posted it. My real supporters fuck with me. Mm. Females was like, I fuck with this. They never heard me talk like that. But females was fucking with it. And you got the people, some people just feel like, oh, everybody else hating. Let me, let me tag in. Follow the lead ass motherfuckers like, oh, let me copycat. Oh, they hate and let me hate too. But at the end of the day, everybody's seen it. At least I ain't dropping and nobody ain't seen it. And there's more music on the way. It's so much stuff when that, is that I'm coming? creating. When is the new music coming? Because they waiting. We waiting. I'm waiting. We're we, we going to let this one sit for just a little minute, but I got some more shit for y'all. And at the end of the day, even when the new shit drop, I'm still pushing this one because Give It To Me is a hit. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they might not fuck with it. I'm not going to say they might not fuck with it because people fuck with it, but you got people that hate it too. But people, they hate everything when it first drop. Do you, um, I, I wanted to ask you this. They hear everything. Then when it blow up, everybody, I knew it. Oh my gosh. She, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Like, but no, I got so much music and... None of my music is like my old music. And I had to sit down with myself. When it came to finding myself, I had to understand that you are not the same person anymore. Mm. What as as my as me, myself, fuck Charlie the MC, as Michelle, who am I? What am I going to create? What am I going to write about? The things that I'm going through as a grown as fucking woman, I'm pushing 30. I'm not no teenager living in Northeast no more on the block thinking shit is cool and all that. I'm a grown ass fucking woman. What does that woman want to put out to the world? That's what I'm putting out. Well, I really didn't know the old Shelly DMC. I met her <laughs> once, but I like, I fuck with this Shelly. Yeah. I fuck with this Michelle, as you would say it. <laughs> Yo, um. I'm big on saying Michelle because. You got to change the artist that's name to me. Michelle now. No, no, no. No, MC is my initials. So, at the end of, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm me. I can do nothing but be me. People big, are even gonna big, like it or dislike Michelle. it. Big at Michelle. the end of the day, I'm going to be me. Whatever it is that I want to create, people's like, this not her, and she's forcing it, and she's trying too hard. Do you know me? Like, do you, how are you gonna tell me? Because I'm making a sex song talking some freak shit that that's not me. You be in the bed with me. You been in the bed with me, bitch. Northeast baby days, bitch. I've been a freak, bitch. Like, just because I ain't talk to y'all about it, ain't make no music about it, don't mean shit. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, and I'm drunk, so I'm popping my shit, bitch. But Pop what? Shit. You talking about, oh, that's not her shit. I can, we can go through the comments right now. Oh, that's not her. She's fortunate. It doesn't seem organic. Uh, bitch, that's me. Any nigga that fuck with me, no, that's me. I said what the fuck I said. I meant every fucking line in that song. I got creative. I'm laying down. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm about to get in my bag on this one. That's me. That's me. You don't know. You got to get to know me all over again because I'm not who I used to be. And that's what people got to understand. You love it or you hate it. I give a fuck. The haters going to bring all the views. People still watch it. Y'all seen it. And somebody told me, too, you need to be upset when people ain't talking. Mm. When you drop some music for the first fucking time and nobody's nobody noticed it, that's when it's a problem. But y'all was in an uproar about because I dropped the song about sex, like we all don't have sex. But oh, niggas is out here fucking. But it's a problem sure. because it's me. But if Nikki said it, if Megan said it, whoever the fuck in the female industry in the industry female industry that wanted to say it, they'd be like, hey, but because it's Shelly, because it's just me. No, da, 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 da. paragraphs like you taking the time out your day to write a per like get over it. 
in the next song that I drop, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want to say. That's how I'm creating. At the end of the day, that's what I want to talk about. I'm a grown-ass woman. Same way I post whatever pictures I want to talk. Y'all going to talk about pictures. Y'all going to talk shit about it. So what? Y'all don't pay my bills. Like... Y'all don't pay my bills. Y'all don't like it. Like haters, at the end of the day, no, 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 no. haters do pay the bills. I was about to say haters. Let me let me back up. Bit. Haters do pay the bills, so keep talking, cause y'all do pay my bills. Y'all do pay my bills, so yeah, so keep talking. Yo, I feel like you were like, <laughs> I've seen a few of your interviews, and I feel like this probably was the most. This is the best I've one, seen. cause I'm being real transparent. Like you're like, and I never talk. I never go on live and explain myself. I'm never in the comments like. Oh my God, well, first of all, so this is the why I shot the video. And this is the reason why. I don't, shut up. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I see everything, though. Don't get me wrong. I see everything. I see when somebody diss me. I see when they talk shit. I see all my DMs. I see I see it. But what, is, is it going to keep the roof off the top of my head? And me, and me entertaining y'all and reacting back is giving bothered. <laughs> like, I'm never going to go back and forth with nobody on the, over the internet. Like, I'm just... I don't have it in me. I don't, I'm not into giving people a reaction. Y'all watched it. That's all that matters. Mm. The people out here, when we push that shit, are we going to see it? Guess what? Out here, they show love. They going to fuck with it. But I still got real supporters back home. So it's like, the people that fuck with it, fuck with it. When that shit goes somewhere, when I drop the next song and it gets somewhere, my time is going to come. I ain't stressing it. I don't sit around stressing about my time and if the song going to blow up and it's going to come, guaranteed. On God's time, when it's time, it's, it's divine timing. Like, it's no stress. I don't go out and I don't chase it. No, nah, for sure. It's going to happen. Was there anything that you left, that you didn't talk about, that you wanted to talk about, that we left on the table? I think we talked about everything. We talked about everything. To think. What do you um, want the people to, to know? From this interview, what do you want people to take from this? What do you want people to, to know about Shelly the MC, like, I guess. I feel like I just want people, everybody that knows me, that's, and I'm on, I don't want to say people in Atlanta because people in Atlanta don't know me. But so everybody that knows me from who I used to be, I want people to understand that that's not me anymore. I'm a grown ass woman. The new you. The new you. Let's take a drink to that. The new you. Shelly yeah. the MC, everybody. Hey. Period. <laughs> it's a fucking great conversation. Hey. No, nah, I fuck with this interview. We got deep. We really talking. And I, because I don't talk on the internet. I don't go live. I don't be in the comments. I don't explain myself. I get my money. I look at all the hate. I look at all the bullshit. I see the love too. And I just keep it moving. AT, how many times this week we'd have heard people say, I love this interview? Let's keep it going. I hey. like your topics because you ain't like. You ain't jump straight into the music. You really, we, we talk yeah, about we personal shit. Like, and people, and honestly, people that see this interview, after they see this, they gonna fuck with me. Because at the end of the day, it's like, damn, one, I finally hear her talking. She's finally telling her side of the story. Because I don't, never do that. I never tell my side of the story. And I'm a real person. Understand that I'm human. I ain't out here fucking with nobody. I don't know why people don't fuck with me. I don't give a fuck. But honestly, it shows the side that people don't get to see. And then you kind of understand, like, everything is not about the internet. Well, people is like, oh, it's just a trend to keep trolling somebody, keep bothering somebody, keep throwing all these hate. And at the end of the day, I'm human just like y'all human. And my life is together when I log out. That's what I really want to say. Like, when I, I can log out of that right there and, and shut down my phone and deactivate, I'm going to still be good. What did the girl say? Period. Period, poo. Shelly the MC, everybody. Mr. J-Hill, J-Hill Podcast. Oh, man, great conversation. This is a wrap. <laughs>